What's the hardest part of being a cinematographer? The hardest part of being a cinematographer is probably, well, I reserve the right to take this back. Uh, and But I think, well, in general, I think time is always the enemy. So is, is trying to manage time. I think that's a, a big part of filmmaking and probably life too is just, just time. You're, you can never make more time. You can make everything else, but you can't make more time. And as a cinematographer, you're always going to be torn between, ooh, I could add another light or we could bring in some negative, like you can always tweak an image, but the more time you give something now, the less time you'll have in the evening for the scene that's later. So you're constantly compromising. Uh, so I, it's so it's either the battle with time or the battle with ego. I really, I'm, the more I work, the more I realize ego really takes up a lot of space on set. And it's not, and I don't mean just other people's ego, though I do also mean that, but really your own, especially as cinematographer, hierarchy gets very tricky, you know, on, I, I've always been a feature film nerd and it's almost easy on a feature, the director's the boss generally, like that's, so it's almost a cleaner thing, but the more TV I've been doing, it's my job to make sure that there are visual through lines and sometimes you have a director who comes in and maybe wants to do something that isn't in the language of the show and you try to balance like, okay, I want to give the director what they want, but I have to also make sure that the showrunner that we're, or whoever, the producer, whoever might be the creative through line, that they're getting what they need, and that I'm also making sure that we're not getting off track too far. And finding the places to, to curb my own ego when there are other people telling me that we need to do something that feels wrong or or maybe just I don't like, you know, wh whatever that is and and trying to quiet my ego so that I can be logical about something like, okay, is this just because I want my idea to be right or is this actually affecting the what we're working on right now? Like how much is ego versus, you know, the, uh, something that's actually for the show and I've been lucky that over the last four years, I've been working on a lot of series and just really going, going, going. And it's helped me. I think I think if I had done some of the jobs I've had in the last year, if I had done them five years ago, I think I would have done a, a significantly poorer job because just because of my own ego, which I, I hate to say, but I, it's something that I've noticed more and more is keeping my own mind quiet while on set and learning to listen as opposed to talk and get all my ideas out. It's really trying to, yeah, na navigation of ego, I guess. So time or ego, it's one of those two is the, probably the trickiest part of my job, I think. And this is going to go back to, to Humboldt State again, but do you think in some ways um, it was so supportive that when you came to another place that was maybe more competitive? that it was more difficult to navigate or I'm, that's just, that's my no. ego. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I think it's it's interesting because going back to Humboldt and my grad school, this is this is the one of my arguments for film school actually is to, to be in a place where you can fail constantly, like, like it's okay, it's not only okay, you should fail, you should swing for the fences and fall on your butt. Like it's, I think that's important and it also, because my program was small and you were doing everything, it did give me confidence for sure. So I had, you know, it's easy to be a big fish in a small pond, but when you move to Los Angeles, like nobody cares. And I, you know, I was, I was shooting, I was like one of the only people that anyone would call to shoot a short up in Humboldt. And then I came to LA and it took me years before I could get anybody to let me shoot anything for free. I was gripping and then gaffing for a while and it definitely, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that was also tricky for my ego. 
But again, same thing. I worked with with uh, with a gentleman, Hollywood Heard was his name. Uh, I don't even remember what his real first name was, but he, we all called him Hollywood. And he was a, an older gaffer, um, and he taught me a lot. He and a big part of it was keep it taught me to keep my mouth shut because I, you know, I was used to being somebody who had opinions that people would listen to on tiny, tiny little sets. And he gave me my first work in Los Angeles on you know low budget features that kind of thing, and realizing like I'm a small cog in a very large machine, and watching people make mistakes that I some of them I could foresee was very frustrating. He'd be like, "Oh, the sun is by the time this track is laid down, the sun will be behind those trees. Like I can see it." And they're like, "No, no, this isn't your job. You could you don't tell them how to." And then I'd watch that happen. So, so it was hard to learn to shut up, uh, but also really good for me. You know, that's, I like to, when I'm on set, I encourage my crew to give me ideas. I love gathering ideas. It doesn't mean I'll take them, but I'm very open. I love collaboration. But I also, you know, I do my work. And so, if something doesn't fit aesthetically or tonally, it's easy for me to just be like, mm, I don't think we're gonna do this in the unsteady cam. I think that that doesn't quite, you know, whatever. So I, I think just, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it's a dance because in, in Humboldt, uh, I, my ego probably got inflated and then it got beat down coming to Los Angeles and and now I don't, I guess I don't know where I sit with, with my own ego. Always working on it, meditating every day, and which is a habit I picked up um, because of film. I, I was on a series in Albania that was so stressful, I almost had a nervous breakdown. Like I had a really tough time, and the director uh, meditated every day at lunch. And out of pure desperation, uh, just to d try and do anything, I started meditating. And now I never, I haven't missed a day of uh, a meditation before a day of shooting in probably four years. I've been, yeah. So that, David that Lynch. helps. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for how long a period of time do you meditate? So I meditate, it's pretty quick. I do 10, the, my rhythm now is when I'm working, I wake up, I do my you know, morning stuff at home, and I get to set early and I meditate for 10 or 15 minutes in my car, and then I get out, I have a little breakfast, and, and then start the day. So it's 10, 10, 15 minutes every morning before I walk on to set, but always parked right near it. And what happens if you're, you're trying to meditate, but then there's this little, oh, did I bring that? Oh, didn't I, did I remember to, oh, she, what, what if there's like this nagging voice about, what you're supposed to do? Yeah, I mean, I have I've been meditating for four years, and I've probably I could probably count on one hand the number of times where a little voice wasn't talking to me. So it's just part of it. It's part of the process, and that's fine. And you know, I can always deal with it after my 10, 15 minutes is up. So whatever it is, uh, it it definitely comes in and out. But the, I'll just deal with it afterwards. Usually, usually the 10 minute span doesn't affect anything. So yeah, I just let those thoughts go as best I can. What would your advice be for, let's say, a young person who comes to a competitive set? It doesn't have to just be LA. And what I've seen with competitive environments is there's a lot of unwritten rules and you'll never, you're, you learn trial by fight. You know, you're yeah. going to find out that, oh, that wasn't okay, yeah. but you didn't know it. So what would your advice be? And they're, they're just someone that has good intentions. They're not trying to climb up they just think that that's the way to do it but they're not sure this is like an un sort of uncharted territory for them. yeah i mean being on set is tricky for sure for everyone and if you're newer um i think i mean really i think the biggest piece of advice for anybody who wants to work really in any capacity uh on a film set is be kind and be humble like it doesn't like if you're if you're right and you're witnessing people be wrong, like, fine. Like the, you don't need to express that. Like it's okay th to just swallow some of your comments and just be. I mean, really, 
film work, especially narrative, like features, TV, uh, longer shorts, they're exhausting. They're so tired. I mean, commercial, everything. And, you know, once you get to hour 14 on day 26, everybody's exhausted, everybody's stressed, people miss their families. It's, it's a, a very, film work is very difficult. And the people who you surround yourself by or who you are surrounded by affect everything, your mood, your ability to think. And if somebody is challenging you constantly, even if they're right, it, it beats you down and you only have so much energy. I think of it sometimes like a battery just being drained. And if you have to spend 5% of your battery dealing with a personality, like then that's removing 5% from something else. And the people who seem to get hired more are people who are pleasant to work with. And I think that's something that surprised me a lot about Los Angeles. But it also, it just delights me. I never thought that, you know, being kind would help your career. But it makes perfect sense. Now that I'm on set and I realize how exhausting people are. Every, everybody, myself included, we're all exhausting. Everybody needs something from, you know, whether we need affirmations or what, whatever it is. We're draining. We're exhausting as a species. So when somebody is easy and still does their job, it's a magical combination. And so I really, I think everybody's eager, especially when you're young and you're new, you're eager to get ahead or I want like this or, or, you know, or just chasing money or whatever it is. I think slowing down and just being in the room uh, and yeah, learning to read a room, uh, that's the other thing. So I think being kind and learning to read a room when it's tense, you know, maybe be a little more quiet. When everybody's in a good mood, like that's great, jive along with it. But being, reading the room, knowing when to be quiet, which is just most of the time, uh, I think that stuff all helps. But really being kind, being humble, I think goes, it takes you far in life, I think. I'll check back in 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> that's great, wow. I like that story. So the guy, he he was, you said a gaffer or he was like a, mm -hmm. and he's, he was kind of saw you and said like, don't, don't do this and don't do that. Yeah. He really, he, he would get in my ear and he's sort of, you know, he's a big personality. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be curious. I haven't seen him in 15 years probably. So I'd be curious to see how he's doing now. But for me, I got frustrated seeing people with way more experience than me. So I, I thought I knew better. Uh, and he was just like, hey, that's not your job. Like that's a big part of it is I had come partially coming from such a small school and small town, you show up on set, you, you're gonna do a little of everything. Sound, lighting, crafty, like you, it's, you're gonna get your fingers in every aspect of it. And being on sets, they were still, you know, small movies, but you have your lane and I would offer to help other departments and if they wanted help, great. And if they didn't, that's also great. Like it, so I think learning your position and knowing you can't do everything uh, unless, you know, you are, so there are some directors who are great at everything. There are very few of them, but there are some who are just very knowledgeable but that also tends to lead to micromanagement and people don't tend to enjoy that. You know, people want to feel like collaborators. They want to feel like they have um, some input on, on, you know, have their fingerprints on a project in one way or another. So, yeah, I think, I think just learning to not just do, do your job and with a smile on your face if you can manage it. Yeah.